Popeye. Popeye was originally created as a supporting character in the comic strip Thimble Theater, until he ended up taking over the entire strip in what might be the earliest known example of Urkelization. But it was the Fleischer Studios animated takes on Popeye that propelled him to international superstardom, and gave him most of his trademarks, such as his rivalry with Bluto, his super-powered spinach, and his catchy theme song. Fleischer Studios was later acquired by Paramount, who would become one of many studios to produce Popeye animated projects. Or almost produce them in some cases. But of course, Universal licensed Popeye for theme park usage. And out of all the King's Features characters Universal licensed for Toon Lagoon, he was the one who received the most real estate. No, he wasn't just gonna get a token comic panel on King's Row, he got a whole subland of the land. Yes, a corner of Toon Lagoon is Sweet Haven, complete with a ride, a play area, and meet and greets, which apparently were fuzzy characters once, but last I checked, they've moved to face characters. Which is more off-putting? You decide! But where, you ask, does Disney come into it? Popeye's cameo in Roger Rabbit was deleted before it was even animated, so when did Disney do something with Popeye? The same time they launched Robin Williams' film career. Well, they helped, but to be fair, Paramount did most of the work. That's right, Robert Altman's live-action Popeye movie was a co-production of Disney and Paramount. The movie is... slow. Very slow. But it's very well cast, and I love the production design. The only reason this movie was made in the first place is because Paramount lost a bidding war for the movie rights to Annie, so they were like, what other comic strip can we turn into a musical? Turns out they still had the Popeye theatrical rights from their acquisition of Fleischer Studios. Pre-production and production on the film reportedly ran out of control, and the film went wildly over budget, so Disney stepped in to co-produce in exchange for international distribution. This was before Sleeping Beauty was awakened, when Disney wasn't the most powerful force in the world, they were just a struggling movie company that sometimes had to partner with other struggling movie companies to get by. So Popeye is in an international Disney product. In the US, it's still technically a Paramount product. But this was actually a good deal for everyone involved because at the time, Disney was doing better business overseas than they were in the US. The Disney name carried more weight in other countries, so it really was the best deal for everyone involved. Of course, now Paramount doesn't have the Popeye rights anymore. Sony had them for a hot second there, but they apparently gave them up, so they missed their opportunity to do the Popeye versus Annie movie we've all been waiting for. Disney and Paramount continued this collaboration again on a movie called Dragon Slayer, and then they parted ways just in time for Paramount CEO to jump ship and become Disney CEO. Then, decades later, Disney bought a bunch of companies who had already co-produced movies with Paramount, and so they just acquired movies Paramount already made, but you're not watching this video for the Paramount-Disney dichotomy, let's get back to talking about Universal. 